Hi, something slightly different for today's episode. We're going to be looking at what amazing creatures have colonised this truck full of rainwater. And make sure you watch to the end as I'll discuss how I think these creatures actually got in here. So normally these pond dipping videos involve me going to a nice nature reserve or country park, find a nice picturesque pond and find out what creatures live in there. But today we're in my garden, which as you can probably tell is a bit of a mess. And we're looking at part of that mess, which is this truck, which about a year ago, I put a bag of builder sand in because there was a storm forecast and I didn't want it to blow away. It unsurprisingly filled up with rainwater. I forgot about it for a few weeks, perhaps months. And by the summertime, when I finally got around to sorting it out, I found it had been colonized by water fleas. So I didn't have the heart to drain it out then, so I've left it, but unfortunately it's now got to go. The first reason is I've got to sort out this garden. It's a right old mess and this is in the way. The second reason, is it has duckweed in. Now you may be wondering why my pond hasn't featured on this channel yet, and that is because it's a bit of a disaster zone. I'm a bit embarrassed to show you, but here it is. There's a big hole in the liner, and the only reason there's so much water in it is because it's been so much rain. And as you can see, it has been completely swamped by duckweed. So I need to completely redo it, but before I do, I want to remove every trace of duckweed from my garden so it can't recolonize the main pond. So let's see what's in here. Now, other than the water fleas, I have seen some other creatures in here. Obviously, the classic mosquito larva have been in here. I'm pretty sure I've seen some chironomid midge larva as well. But interestingly, I've seen these flying around. These are hoverflies. And I believe both these species have aquatic larva. But we'll talk more about them later on. Hopefully, when I find some in here. But step one is take the duckweed out and check that for creatures. So I've got my aquarium net to scoop out the duckweed with. This one's probably a bit big, so I might have to go and get my smaller one. And I'm going to scoop out the duckweed. And normally you put it in a pond tray to see what's in there. But the problem with duckweed is, because it floats on the surface, you can't see the creatures underneath. So instead, I've got a little aquarium to put it in. Let's see what we can find. Now there's a bit of willow moss in here as well, so I might put that back in for now. It's just a matter of doing a little bit at a time and see what we can find. So what I'm doing here is scooping out duckweed, checking there's nothing in it. As you can see, there's actually some creatures in there already. It's going to be long and tedious. I'm not going to show you all of the all of it. But what I will show you, you might be able to see. Let's pour it into the tray and then we can see it better. I'm not sure how well you can see this. So. I've poured the contents of the aquarium into this tray and as expected there's loads of water fleas and there's some chironomid midges or blood worms as you can see these bright red ones there's also mosquito larva but I think what surprised me the most is there's freshwater shrimps in here how on earth have they got in there and some little snails well having gone through all that duckweed it's fair to say there's one or two snails in there Pretty much every dark spot you're looking at here is a snail. Crazy. Well, that's the majority of the duckweed gone. It's been picked through and then placed in this bucket and it'll be stuck in the compost heap where it can't do any harm. Now to step two, I'm gonna take out this huge clump of willow moss and place it in this tray of pond water. So now I've got it in the tray, what I'm basically doing is pulling it apart, giving it a good wash, making sure there's nothing on it and put it in the compost bucket. Now having all this willow moss here has helped me develop a theory on how some of these creatures have got in here. I've got on the table behind me trays of willow moss that I'm growing to use around my pond when I redo it. And I do have a vague recollection of one of them blowing off the table. And at least some of it, if not all of it, probably would have ended up in that truck, which was positioned right next to it. So that might explain this willow moss and some of the creatures being in here that otherwise might not have got in here. But we'll discuss that more later. So plenty has come out of the willow moss. More blood worms or coronal midge larva, a few water fleas and freshwater shrimps. So it's onto the third stage. I need to drain the water without losing any of the creatures. So to drain the water, I'm literally just gonna scoop it out, pour it through this fine mesh net and just keep doing this. So this sludgy water is the result of draining all the water out. 
there's still quite a lot of sediment and leaves on the bottom as you can see so I'm going to have to pick through that a bit. So I've now got an aquarium and a tray full of creatures and two trays of muddy water I'll be picking some creatures out of too. So now I'm going to have a dig around in here and see what we can find. Well I've finally gone through those two trays and all the bottom sediment in that pot, quite a few bloodworms in both the tray and the pot. I ended up putting it all through a net and a sieve to wash out as much of the fine silt and stuff as I could. Now everything that was alive in that truck is in this tray and this aquarium. So let's take a closer look at them. Let's start with the bloodworms. These are a type of chironomid midge. Anyone that's kept fish will probably know them as live food. There are 630 species of chironomid midge in the UK and the larva of some of these are often red in colour. This is due to haemoglobin in their bodies, the same iron containing protein that carries oxygen in our red blood cells and this helps them absorb more oxygen from the water and enables them to live in less than ideal conditions such as the mud at the bottom of a pond or a truck which will often have low oxygen levels. Not bad for a creature most people think of as just fish food. These larvae would have got here by the adults laying eggs in the truck, which by the way are non-bite images. There is also lots of mosquito larvae. These are perhaps the least surprising inhabitant as I often find their larvae in rain filled containers like water butts and pots that have been left out in gardens. Perhaps not the most popular creature, but only the females bite and only certain species bite humans. And of course they're an important food source for lots of creatures like bats. These larvae can usually be found hanging from the surface and have a little snorkel at the end of their abdomen to enable them to access the air. But when disturbed, they'll quickly swim down. They feed by filtering bacteria, fungi, protozoans and other small morsels from the water using their comb-like mouth parts. Like the chironomid midges, the adult mosquitoes would have flown to the drug and laid their eggs in the water. There were of course loads of these little snails, which after a closer look I identified as the acute bladder snail. Thanks to my friend Simon for confirming this ID. It is a small species, these are only 5 or 6 millimetres long, and they feed on dead leaves and other plant matter, as well as any detritus or dead creatures that they come across. They are not native to the UK, but are in fact native to North America, but have now spread across much of the world. In fact, if you find a small snail in your aquarium, there's a good chance it's this species, and it would likely got into your aquarium on some plants, which is probably how these got in the trug, falling in with the willow moss that ended up in the trug. While this is the most likely, there's another possibility with these little snails, as they have been known to be transported by birds, but not sticking to their feet. Snails have been shown to be eaten by ducks and to seal themselves in their shell before then being pooped out by the duck, which of course could be many miles away if it's flown somewhere else in the meantime. Probably unlikely here, but something to bear in mind next time you're bird watching. Perhaps the biggest surprise was these freshwater shrimps. Of course, they're not actually shrimps, but another type of crustacean, an amphipod. They feed largely on decaying plant matter and algae, although I have seen them take the old water flea. These freshwater shrimps are sometimes known as gamorous. That's a species that's found in freshwater streams with at least a reasonably good water quality. But the blue colour of some of these, its small size, and the fact that it's in a tiny still water body demonstrates that this is the smaller species called Cragonyx pseudogracilis, which is actually a non-native species, which was purposely introduced to lakes in southern England to act as fish food. This species is much more tolerant of poor water quality and if you have a freshwater shrimp in your pond in the UK it is most likely to be this species. As for how it got there, they have been shown in studies to be transported between ponds in the fur of mammals and on the feathers of birds. But that seems somewhat unlikely here. I suspect, just like the snails, a few got in with the willow moss and then bred like crazy. Another crustacean I found in the truck was this water louse and they belong to a group called the isopods, which also includes the similar looking woodlouse. And like woodlice, they feed on dead leaves and the fungi that grow on them, and can tolerate some pretty poor water quality. But I only found one in the trug, and it's quite well grown, so I suspect it too came in on the willow moss, but sadly was alone, so didn't breed. The most numerous organism was by far the water fleas, which are the plankton of the pond. These little crustaceans swim around in the water column, eating algae, and try not to be eaten by nearly every other predator in the pond. Of course in the trug they were pretty much safe from predation, apart from maybe a hungry freshwater shrimp, which as I mentioned do occasionally take them. When times are good for the water fleas, such as in warm weather with lots of algae growing, there are only female water fleas, and these rapidly give birth to more females without mating that do the same, and they can rapidly build up a large population from only a few individuals. But when things don't look so good, such as when the pond is drying up or the temperature drops as winter approaches, just like it is now, then males are produced and the females mate with them and develop ephippia, which are drought-resistant eggs. You can see them here developing inside this female. 
and interestingly, when I cleaned out the truck, there were lots of small black seed-like things on the surface, which were these drought-resistant eggs. This is likely how the water fleas got into the truck. The drought-resistant eggs got out of my pond, perhaps when it started to dry out in summer, and these would have ended up being blown around my garden, some which eventually made it into the water in the truck, where they hatched and colonised it. So that's quite a lot of diversity for a truck in my garden. I did mention another species at the start of this video, the hoverflies. Unfortunately, I didn't find any hoverflies in my truck, but while cleaning out a leaf and water field tray nearby, I did find some hoverfly larvae, which are also known by another name, and it's one of the least appealing names in the animal kingdom, the rat-tailed maggot. Because someone decided that being a maggot wasn't unappealing enough, so decided to add not only the name of an animal that's regarded as a pest by many, but its tail, which is the body part that grosses most people out. It's poor little hoverfly larva. Sure, it's not as beautiful as a butterfly, but they are amazing creatures. That long so-called rat tail actually works as a kind of snorkel, and it's telescopic too, able to stretch up to the surface, and it enables them to live in areas with no oxygen, such as water filled with leaves or mud. Here they feed on decaying matter, providing a valuable service breaking down dead plant material, often in stagnant water where little else can survive. And of course, after they've pupated, they turn into adult hoverflies, which are fantastic pollinators. It's a shame such a wonderful creature has been given such a repulsive name. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Just goes to show you can find amazing life in any body of water. Thanks for watching, and do please consider liking and subscribing.